Hello and welcome to step six under projects, select open and step six and open again. In this stage, we're going to add some windows, some stairs and some shaft openings for the stairs. So our first step, we're gonna add some windows. So if you go to the project browser and double click on the north elevation, we then go up to the architectural tab and select window. In our properties palette, we can either select a multiple of M fixed, or we can go to right at the top, multiple place window, which is currently green, go to load family. A new window opens, which you've previously seen. This window contains all the Revit families in 3D and 2D. We're not going to use this information. We're going to use the data sets in the file that I've supplied you. Your data sets and the information I've given you may be placed somewhere different. Mine is placed on the documents under Reva data sets. Getting started tutorial, getting started tutorial, data sets, additional files. The window family we're going to select is window variable and then press open. Once the window family has been loaded, we're going to place it on our wall. We're going to place it roughly between grid lines three and two and between levels four and five. So once you go there, click. Once you've placed it, press escape twice. Zoom in and select the window you have placed. And you will notice, just like the variable door in the last video, you can actually pull the pull handles up, down, to the left and to the right. To tighten up the window to have an accurate dimension, over, over in the, the properties, properties palette, palette under, under dimension, dimension let's, let's change, change the, the width, width to 1.5. Soon as, as you bring, bring your cursor, cursor back, back into, into the drawing, drawing space, the window will update. One thing to remember about Revit and the placement of a window is it is always talking to a level. So when I placed the window previously, I placed it between level five and level four. In my properties palette, you can see that the window is placed at level four under the constraints. But in reality, on my drawing area, my window sill is actually at level three. This is incorrect. To make this correct, it is advised that you select the pull handles, pull it up to level four, go over to the properties palette, select the level, and change it to level three. Once you bring your cursor back into the space, you will see that the window has dropped. Again, to tighten up the window's dimension, we would like the height under the properties palette, the height to be 7.5. With the window still being selected and blue, we're going to copy it three times to the left. So it's between grid lines three and two. Under the modified windows tab, which is still green, select the copy tool. But before you move the window in the options bar, tick multiple. Go down to your window, click on it once, move it to the left, click again, move it to the left and click again. And you will find that we have three windows. Again, just like before, to cancel the command, press escape twice. To be able to tighten our windows up equally between grid lines three and two, go to the annotate tab, select the align tool, then click on the grid line, then on the center axis of the window once, then the next one, click again, then the next one, click again, and then on grid line two, and remembering you have to click in negative space to finish the command, click again. Now, just like before we did with the doors, select the EQ button, press escape to cancel the command, select the dimension and press delete. Just like again, you get the same warning in the bottom right hand of your screen, press OK. Now that we've finished these three windows, we want to be able to add them and duplicate them to the other side of the building. Go to your project browser and double click level three. From here, I want you to close the North Elevation tab. 
Then, as before, press WT, then ZA to zoom all. Now, zooming in on level three and the windows that you've created, I want you to select them from the bottom left to the top right corner, like so. Again, just as before, if you go to the filter button, button you, you can, can see that, that I have selected three windows. windows. Press, Press OK, OK to close this. this. To duplicate these windows so they're on the other side of the building, zoom out a little bit, and under the modified windows tab, which is still green, I want you to choose the tool Mirror Pick Axes. Select this tool, hover over grid line C, and then click. And automatically you will notice, as well as in 3D and on your plan, that the windows have duplicated and mirrored across the C grid line. Our next task, we're going to add some stairs. So I'd like you to go to the project browser and double click level one. I would also like you to close level three and then press WT ZA to zoom all. In your 3D window, I want you to be able to see what we're going to do next. So select your steering wheel and orbit the building so it looks around about like this. Then close the steering wheel with the cross. Under the architectural tab, along to the middle, there is a button called stair. I'd like you to press this and then within our level one window, click in it. Under, Under the, the properties, properties palette, palette we, we want, want to select steel stair MPK. Staying within the properties palette, we want to change the desired number of risers to 17. Additionally, we want to change the railing, which you will notice that the user interface is a slightly different green. There's a red cross and a green tick. And then to the very far right, there's a railing button. I want you to press this. And we want to change the stair to glass MPK and press OK. With all this done, we're now ready to draw our stair. So if you zoom in to grid line five and between C and D, if you hover over grid line five and then click once and slowly move your cursor to the right, you'll notice in gray how many rises you're about to draw. We want 10. Click once when you get to 10, then moving your cursor slightly up Click again until you get to the end, which says seven risers created. Then click again to finish. One of the great things about Revit stairs is we can actually drag and stretch just like the variable windows and variable doors in the previous training videos. If I select the top stair, you automatically see our temporary dimensions and you will notice that the width of our stair is 1.0. If I select this temporary dimension and change it to 1.3, our stairs automatically updates and is reflected in the properties palette over here. Selecting our bottom run of stairs, we could even drag the pull handles to be 1.3. Now, as you can see on my screen, our landing has gone bright orange and an ignorable warning has arrived in the bottom right hand corner saying landing depth is less than the run width. That is because we have changed the stairs to 1.3 on both runs, but our landing is actually thinner. To change this, select the landing and change the width in the temporary dimension to 1.3. Now that we've done this, we can finish the sketch by clicking the green tick. As you can see in our 3D window, our stairs has automatically appeared. To be able to see this better, if you go to the properties palette, 
Under extents, you will see a section box, box which is not ticked. I'd like you to tick this. In your 3D window, zoom out a little bit and you will see a section box. Select the section box and you will notice that we have pull handles from the top, bottom, left and right, front and back. Select one of these pull handles and slightly drag it in until it cuts your stair. A quicker way of doing this and isolating an object within the section box is to actually select the stairs and under the modify stair tab which is currently green under the view section you will see a section box tool. Click this and you will notice our section box has isolated the stairs. This is a very helpful tool especially when you have big projects. To be able to do a multi-story stair in Revit so that the stairs can go all the way up to level 5, select your level 1 floor plan. Under the view tab and directly under the word view, there is a section tool. Press this. From here, I would like you to click once on the left hand side of the grid line and then drag all the way along and then click again on the right hand side of the stair. As Revit is a BIM tool, all views are connected to the model. So now that we've just drawn this section, under our project browser, you will notice a new drawing title called Sections, Building Sections. If you open up these drawings, you will now see Section 1, which is the section we have just drawn. We have two ways to enter this view. Either double tap Section 1, or we can actually use the Section Head in Level 1. So if I close Section 1, back to Level 1 Floor Plan, click in negative space, zoom in slightly over the section head and double click, your section will automatically open. So to make this stairs go all the way up to level five, in our section, we select the stairs, under the modify stair tab, which is currently green, we select levels. Now we are in an edit mode, as you can see, we have a green cross and a red tick. We need to select levels three, four, and five. Then we do the green tick to finish the sketch mode and all stairs have arrived up to level five. To see this better, go to your 3D view, select the section box, grab the pull hand at the top all the way up and you will see our stairs from level one to level five. Our next stage is to add a shaft for the stairs because you can currently see that the stairs is coming through the slab. So if we close section one, centralize the stair within our level one drawing, go to the architectural tab, along to the left, under openings, click shaft. Again you will notice that the user interface has changed because we are in a sketch mode. We choose the rectangle drawing tool, zoom in slightly to the last risers, click on the top left and then drag down and then click on the bottom right. To make this shaft opening a bit more usable we need to offset three sides so you will be able to have your hand on the handrail without hitting the floor slab. To do this, under the modify section within the modify create shaft opening section, you will see a little button that says offset. Select this button and in the, and in the options toolbar, change 1.0 to 0.3 and uncheck copy tool. Go down to your drawing area and hover over this pink line and you will see a blue dotted line. 
Once it's away and north of the line, press click. Again, on the other two sides, this side, click, and this side, click. Now that we've done this sketch, we can finish it with the green tick. With the shaft still highlighted and blue, if you go over to your properties palette on your far right, you can see the top constraint is unconnected. If we select this and put it up to level five, then bring our cursor into the drawing area, you will notice that our shaft has jumped all the way to the top. If you click in negative space, you will notice that our slab has been cut. One thing you might have noticed is that the actual shaft has cut the ground floor here. We do not want this. There are two ways of changing this. We can either select the shaft and use the pull handle to pull it up so the shaft is not cutting the floor. Alternatively, if I undo that by Control Z, select the shaft again, under the properties palette, you will see base offset minus 0 0.15. If we change this to zero and then bring our cursor back into the drawing area, you will see that this is automatically updated. Okay, so this concludes step six. Close 3D window, close level one and do not save.